Hello and welcome. And in today's video, I'm going to be giving a brief documentary on my attempts to breed my koi fish this year. Now, I tried about three or four times before getting a successful spawning, but I'll show you that later. Before that though, I want to give you a brief guide on how I personally like to breed my koi fish. Now, this year I had tried about three times before getting a successful spawning, so keep in mind, it is not an easy task to spawn your koi, but it is certainly very enjoyable. Now, the first real task when spawning your koi is choosing a spawning area. Now, I personally use a floating net, but you can also use an external tank like this one. However, it is important to note that the size of the koi you're spawning has a big effect on this factor. If you're spawning much larger koi, I always recommend you use a much larger spawning area just to facilitate the size of the fish. I recommend you use water that's quite shallow because it better mimics sort of the natural environment that the koi would spawn in. After you've chosen a spawning area, you can move on to the spawning material. You can use something less natural like these brushes that I personally use, or you can use natural plants, which is more natural and mimics the koi's normal environment. Now, it's really up to you. I do have natural leaf pads in the pond here, and as you can see, the koi is sort of pushing the female around that area. But it's really up to your choice if you want to go natural or unnatural. Now, it's finally time for the most exciting step, which is choosing your koi. Now, I recommend you breed type to type, this is because when you have fry, and they're bred from a type to type male and female pairing, then the koi fry you get from that spawning will be of a higher quality, because they will be from only one type of koi fish. Now, if you do mix your koi, you'll end up with loads of really useless koi, that have no real patterns or any real desirable colours. Now, what this basically means is, if you have a kajaku female, you should only be breeding her of kajaku males to produce koi of a decent quality. Now the one exception to this rule is, if you have a Kahaku female, you can breed her with say a Sankei or a Showa male. The important thing to note is, is the male to female ratio. If you have a female that is quite larger than the males, and the males are say only half the size of her, I recommend you use three males with that female, to improve the fertilisation rate. But if the female is smaller, I recommend you only use two males, to avoid the female koi fish dying from exhaustion, because if you use uh, three males with a smaller koi fish, she can actually die from exhaustion from the males pushing her around. But really, it's up to you on what fish you want to breed together, whatever takes your fancy, and just have a bit of fun with it. Now, it's finally time for my first attempt at spawning this year. Now, I tried first with these two uh, metallic koi here. Now, it's important to note, I have a slightly different tactic when it comes to breeding my koi. Personally, a little hack I use to improve my spawning rates is to release the koi fish into the main pond first and let them show signs of spawning and then I move them into the spawning area. i found that this stops the fish from being scared when you place them in the spawning area because anything on their mind is spawning. Now, what this basically means is I'd found in the past when I placed my female straight into the spawning area, all the fish were too scared to actually start spawning because they were in such a new environment that was so small and full of brushes. So, I tried a new tactic of waiting to see the males actually chase the female around the main pond and then placing them into the new spawning area and I found this had more success rates because they were already sort of in the mind of spawning so when you place them into the new environment they were less scared and just got straight to spawning. Now unfortunately the attempt with the metallic Kajaku female was unsuccessful because the males really paid no attention to her but I had more success with this Kahaku female here as you can see the males were just chasing her around the pond so I acted quickly and I took her out of the pond with the males that I was using to spawn, which was a smaller Sankei male and then a larger Showa male. Now, since I'd already seen them showing spawning behaviour, I was fairly confident that if I placed them into the spawning net, they would continue the spawning behaviour and I'd have a successful spawning in the spawning net. Now, I found in the past that this has increased my chances of actually getting eggs off the fish, because if they're already in the mood, I've just found that they have, you know, more confidence of just going straight into spawning in the net. And it actually saves having to leave them sort of in the net for three days and stressing them out more. And with this in mind, I started attempt number two with the Kahaku female. Now, I got to work and I put her in first, just so she could, she could settle in a bit easier. Now, at this point, I was fairly confident. I felt by tomorrow, I'd have plenty of eggs ready to spawn. You know, I, I'd seen them chasing her around quite a bit, and she seemed quite interested. So I thought if I placed them into the spawning area, I could quite quickly get some action out of her. Now, as you will see in the future, this wasn't going to be the case. Which was quite unfortunate, really. 
But at this point here, I was quite confident. I, I put her in first with the, the, the sock net, just making it a bit easier. And I had quite good confidence that she would spawn in this area. The males have been pushing her up against the lily pads, and she had sort of been pushing herself up against the lily pads, which is quite a key step, really. Because if you see the female also showing interest, it really means there's a good chance of them spawning. And I don't really want to waste any time getting her in the net, because actually the night before, I had missed another Kahaku spawning, because I thought if I left them overnight, they might be ready to spawn the next day, and then I could put them in the spawning area. But unfortunately, they had spawned a lot earlier than I expected, so I missed the spawning, and a large amount of the eggs got eaten, because they were sort of uh, placed into the main pond, which was quite sad actually, because that Kahaku female is one of my favourites. But I still had this larger Kahaku female, and I thought if I put the males in, I'd have quite a good chance of getting her to spawn. I just pulled the net back. And slightly, since so this female is quite a bit larger in. than the males I had, I decided to add a third He's male a in bigger. just to increase the fertilization. Now, this, this male was, this male was really only a quarter of the length of her, Careful, so there was really no issue with this fish like exhausting her or anything. If anything, this fish would probably just follow behind and fertilize extra eggs at most. Yeah, right and also, it had quite strong colors. Now, the pattern wasn't great, but the, the colors yeah, were quite strong. Should and that's enough. something I look for. In there. I'm not too bothered about the patterns of the parent yeah, fish. Toss. All I'm really bothered yeah, about is the body yeah. shape, They're very how similar the colours are, them, and sort of how them. healthy they are. I removed this other fish because I realised it was a female and wasn't a male. But these other guys that I'd put in were looking quite interesting. But I thought I'd just leave them overnight. If they spawned, they spawned. If they didn't, they didn't. At this point, I was fairly confident that they would spawn. But unfortunately, this would not be the case. I leave them in the here for about two or three days. Too small. Now I had good confidence, the eggs, and then by about the third so day, I had to take them out, which is quite, you know, quite eggs, upsetting, so really. That's but hey, you got to move on. After the first two failures, I had to choose from three other females which one I wanted to spawn with next. So uh, after a bit more deliberation, I think I'm going to pick this female here, just because I have a lot more males that can go with her. Yes, the long fin isn't great, but I'm still pretty content to use her. If that doesn't go, after I've done with her, I will try to go with these two. I'll just put them both in at the same time, let them spawn naturally in the pond. But this one I will take out and let it spawn uh, in the spawning area. As you can see, when you flip them over, you can tell they're full of eggs at the moment. The way it bulges out here at the end, and if you give it a, like a slight push, it will have no resistance. It'll be like pushing a um, jelly almost, as you can see, it just sort of goes in like that. And around the stomach here as well, especially on bigger fish, the stomach usually gets quite full, and that'll have the sort of the same texture. As you can see, the vent is obviously a female, it's big and it's pink. If it has pink coloration, it's usually a female vent. But just from the size, I know that all of them have this exact same um, uh, body shape, as you can see here. Uh, this one less so, actually. This one kind of caught me off guard one time because I didn't think it was a female. And then it started spawning. But once you sort of flip it to the side, you can see a bit more of a bulge to it. And it has the exact same sort of um, softness to the bottom of its stomach. Basically, the only thing I have a bit of deliberation on is what I actually want to get out of this spawning I'm going to do now. I'm leaning towards this female here just because I have got, well, for all these fish, I've got males that will match. But for this one here in particular, I just the scalation wise, because this one I'm not that interested in. And then this Deutz um, Sanke here um, is long fin, and I'm not particularly interested in doing long fin spawnings because I'm not the greatest fan of long fins, although this one is very beautiful. Um, I might do her just like a little spawn fit, spawning for fun and just keep like a thousand eggs and then just have like 10 fish from it. but. This one here I'm leaning towards just because I have got quite a few males that are quite similar. And I reckon that with her, I should be able to get some results. But obviously that's in theory, of course. Um, the other thing I'm thinking as well is this one hasn't spawned before yet. And the only issue with that is usually the first spawning is a bit shaky. Um, the eggs aren't that great and, you know, you have a lot less um, fish come out of it. Which is why I'm leaning towards this fish because she's spawned like three or four times already. And the quality of eggs that come from her are much higher than this one. Same with this one as well. She's already spawned a few times. So I'm kind of leaning towards that one in terms of pattern, but these two in terms of just success rates, really. However, once again, I had no success with this female. The males really showed no interest in wanting to spawn with her, but that was okay. I still had quite a few more females at hand that I could try to use. Now, after all the previous failures, I decided just to add in the rest of the females that I still had inside. I had seen the males still chasing some females, so I knew they were still in sort of the spawning mindset. So I thought as a large ditch effort, I would just add in all the females I had left and let the males choose which ones they were interested in. I was fairly confident they would still show some interest, but it was really just sort of a be off of luck at this point. I sort of had tried so many times now 
and I was getting to the point where I was sort of not really confident that I'd get some spawning out of them. But this would eventually prove to not be true. Now I did attempt to do a Kajaku spawning with a slightly smaller female because I thought that maybe the spawning area I was using was a bit too small for the koi carp in question. So I thought if I maybe use a slightly smaller female with two slightly smaller males, they might have a higher chance of spawning in the spawning area. At this point, I was kind of clutching at straws. I wasn't really confident I'd get a spawn in this year. And I thought maybe just try everything and see if it works. Now, as you can see, this female is full of eggs at the moment. The only issue is she's quite young. She's only about two, three years old, I'd say. And the issue you have when you're breeding koi fish that young is that the success rate of the eggs is quite low. And because of this, this spawning was not successful. Now, at this point, I'd really lost all hope. I'd tried maybe three, four times now to spawn the koi, different batches, different types, and I had no real success. So I thought maybe I'd lost my chance to spawn this season and that I'd really get no chances at all. However, finally, in an odd stroke of luck, a female had added about a week earlier had started to show signs of spawning. And seeing this, I jumped at the chance to try and spawn her, as really as my last ditch effort to get her to spawn. And it was a complete stroke of luck, really. The longfin female that I'd put in about a week before had actually spawned in the night. However, she had managed to get herself trapped behind plants where the males couldn't reach her. So she was only really half spawned when I found her, and I absolutely jumped at the chance to try and spawn her. As you can see, there's plenty of eggs coming out of her, and she still had about three quarters of the eggs inside of her. What I think happened was the males had pushed her sort of into the reeds, and they couldn't get to her anymore. So by some massive amount of luck, the males had basically gifted me a female that was completely ready to spawn. You know, this was a complete mood change for me. I was like, just completely happy. I was like, I couldn't believe my luck that I'd managed to catch this female. You know, after all the failures previously, I was like, just completely ecstatic that I'd been so lucky to catch this female and her to have been in such a situation that I could actually spawn with her. So I quickly jumped to the chance. I carp all the males I'd used previous on the Kahaku female and I got to work on placing them in the spawning area. Now, the water was quite murky because they had been sort of chasing her around quite a bit, but it was of no harm to the fish. It's just a bit of algae in the water since the water's still sort of stabilizing in the sun. But I got them right into the net and I was really happy to finally get a good spawning going. I had my fingers crossed and I was praying. And finally, after all my fails, finally, they started to spawn. Now, the larger male really took the initiative to begin with because he was of a larger size, he could sort of really push the female around. And the smaller males sort of just trailed behind her, sort of following, which was fine really, because it meant they were still fertilizing the eggs and they weren't really sort of damaging her at all. But I mean, I cannot tell you how happy I was. They just started spawning right away. And, you know, they were completely happy and fine. You know, she was willingly swimming over the brushes, as you can see here, just going right over there. And there was just thousands and thousands of eggs sort of going over the brushes. And it was even more lucky for me, really, because these uh, Sanke males and Showa males are probably my favorite fish in the pond. They're the nicest colors, the nicest patterns, and just really good bodies. So it was just really lucky that it was um, these fish that actually started spawning. And getting some good footage of it as well was probably the icing on the cake, really, for me, after all the fails I had from the spawning. And after all was said and done, there was thousands of eggs on the brushes, as you can see here. You know, I was just so happy to finally have a successful spawning and to know that these were going to be some really nice Sanke Koi Fry. I couldn't wait. Now, once I'd finished spawning, I quickly got to work on putting her back into the main pond. As you can see, she's a lot skinnier now. All the eggs were gone, but I was sort of just in a hurry to get her back in so she could recover and rest a bit right after the spawning because they do get quite tired after the spawning is finished. I also moved the spawning there inside with the egg bre eggs on the brushes just because I'd found in the past, I had quite good success on hatching my koi fry when I put them in this sort of warmer, nicer environment. And there was just thousands of eggs on these brushes, so I really couldn't wait to see them hatch. It was just really sitting and waiting. And about four days later, I was met with this present surprise. Thousands of Sanke koi fry had hatched and they were sort of starting to swim around on the brushes. I really couldn't believe how many there were and I was just so happy to finally have a proper successful home spawning. I've tried in the year, like previous years to spawn them and it's been quite successful. I've made, had a couple, but I've never really had this many fry hatch successfully and just be so healthy really. You know, these were all healthy, alive. There's plenty of food for them as well. 
as you can see here they're all darting out full of life really and i was just really happy that after all the failed attempts i'd finally managed to spawn a koi you know it, it's good because it means next year i will know what i need to spawn and fingers crossed over the next few years i can sort of document how these fry develop and sort of how they grow and show you guys sort of the selection process how i'm going to care for these fry and just sort of what i'm going to do with them as you've seen in my previous videos you would have seen how the fry are actually doing but it just took me some time to get this video out because editing it and such was quite hard and yeah that is really it i hope you did enjoy this slightly longer video let me know if you want to see some more slightly longer videos like this in the future and yeah i'll see you in the next one guys hope you did enjoy make sure to like and subscribe and bye